So I don't speak uh, Arabic, of course, uh, but I would like to say to everybody what ad salam. I'm not so sure it's the good pronunciation. So uh, I'm from Aix-en-Provence. It's a southern place uh, in France, a very sunny place on the French Riviera. Uh, very fine. If you want to visit me, you will be welcome. I'm also the president of the European Federation of Sport Traumatology. That's why we are really involved in sport, as Asperger do, does. And I would like to thank, of course, all uh, our hosts here to invite me for the second time. The first time I was here for the knee, and we're going to talk about the knee of the upper limb, which is the elbow. So uh, I would like to ask you a question. How many of you did already perform an elbow arthroscopy? Very few. That's why we're going to start with basic. And basic it's how to do it, and you will see that even in experts' hands, elbow arthroscopy is not so frequent. What are the advantages of arthroscopy? I will not move back on the anatomy. It's a narrow and congruent joint, of course, and because it's a narrow and congruent joint, it's quite difficult to explore anatomically. And the scope allows you to do so. That means with the scope, with the different portals, you can have a whole exploration of the whole joint. That's quite interesting, of course. It's a very low invasive procedure. If you follow the rules, if you follow the guidelines, that means that it's less risky about the nerves, about the vessels, and about the risk of instability. If you follow, of course, the guidelines, there is different guidelines, of course, I will give you mine. It's a scope, that means you are in a working space, in the capsule that uh, Gigi, my friend uh, Luigi Pedazzini, just uh, reported you previously. It's a compartment which is closed with a posterior compartment, an anterior compartment, girders and recess. And of course, with the different portal, you can get access to all this area. There is some report about the, the use of scope in the extra articular space, especially on the epicondylitis. Now we go to, see the, to treat the epicondylitis through the joint and not by the superficial side, and you can also make some uh, uh, bursitis resection with the scope, but it's already some uh, an additional uh, tool, so just think about the uh, arthroscopic uh, procedure itself. And you can do so because, of course, it's a straight and congruent uh, joint, but you can make some movement, you will see, and especially the lateral compartment can be la slightly enlarged. There is some l laxity, not laxity, but some stretching you can get from the lateral compartment that allow you to move in different, in different space. If you want to perform an arthroscope uh, procedure, an arthroscopic procedure, you have to make a, a prior planning, of course. And in my end, and it's, uh, used in it's really a, a habit in France. We use usually a natural CT scan. Why? Because it allows you to see exactly the working space, the shape of the bone, and what is the content of the joint. It's much more accurate than any uh, other uh, imaging. X-rays and tomograms are mandatory and legal. And you can, also, you can use also, if you are used to do so, an arthro MRI. And in my experience, and I will talk later on about arthrolysis, I always perform a gamma bone scan just to avoid any pseudo syndrome. Different patient settings have been described. The first one which has been described was in dorsal position. That means you have the, the forearm which is uh, rise up, but it's instable except if you put some traction device. But if you put such a traction device, you have a limited range of motion. That means if you perform this kind of uh, setting, of course, you can get access easily in the anterior compartment, but it's much more difficult to get access to the posterior one. It's unstable. The elbow is moving. And you have a limited range of motion. The second position, which has been de described, was in prone position. It's much more stable much more easier to perform some movement with the elbow, but the anesthesiologist usually dislike it. That's why we use, as a much of a surgeon now, the lateral setting, uh, which has been described by uh, Gary Pauling. 
it, with general anesthesia, it's much more comfortable for, for the surgeon because sometimes it's a quite difficult procedure and when you are not so, co not so confident or not so easy with your procedure, it's better to, to get the patient sleeping. So you have the lateral position with a tourniquet and in this position, you can have a full range of motion in prosupination, flexion and extension, and it's quite stable to get access. One thing which is really important, we're going to see later on, is to draw all the landmarks, the bony landmarks on the skin. And here is a soft point. The soft point is between the capitalum, the radialet, and the olecranon. It's through the anconeo, and you, you go straight to the triangle to get access to the joint. The anatomical landmark has to be drawn, as I told you, and it's probably one of the most important tools on your table is the pen and the needle, because in arthroscopy, the needle is always the best instrument to show exactly the track of your instrument in the future. But don't think centimetrics. So many guidelines told you you have to get in two centimeters above the tip of the allocranon, one centimeter in front of the radial head. It's not true. Don't think centimetrics, seek anatomy, because the elbows of these two persons are fully different. If you think anatomy, once you will be in the bone, once you will be outside of the joint. So think anatomy. It's a secret of arthroscopy. It's not a secret, it's obvious. So first of all, you have to inflate the joint, and inflate the joint, usually I inflate it through the soft point, it's a, the, the straight portal. Some other people just describe to inflate it over the olecranon, it's not a matter, you have to inflate it. When you inflate the joint, it doesn't push the nerve far from the capsule, it just enlarges the capsule. The distance between the nerve and the capsule remains the same. So just pay attention to that. So some people say that inflating the joint, you push the nerve far from the capsule. It's not true. You put it far from the bone. So just think about that. One more, think anatomy. The instrumentation, I use a normal scope, the new one. With a smooth stroker, you need almost always a shaver. I don't use any pump to avoid any extravasation. And when you start your such a procedure, you can use a cannula. I don't do it anymore. So if you want to reach the posterior compartment, there is three portals in my experience. The first one is a straight one, where I, sorry. The first one is a straight one. The straight one in the triangle I just described previously, it allows you to inflate the joint you can go straight from the posterior to the anterior compartment through this triangle. The second one is a superolateral one. It's above the tip of the olecranon. It could, va it could be from one to three centimeters depending on the size of the, of the joint. And it's on the lateral aspect of the triceps tendon to reach straight, you will see on the movie later on, to, to, to reach straight the olecranon fossae. Then the third portal is not superomedial because of the ulnar nerve. You have to be transtricipital, transtricipital straight to the uh, olecranon fossa. And by switching the three portals, you can see all the posterior compartment. Here is a, here is a sample. The scope is, a, is in the posterior portal. There is always a fat pad, uh, a fat uh, tissue at the triangle. You can remove it using the other portal with a shaver, and by pivoting the wrist and the forearm, you're going to see the radial head, the capitalum, the hulna. If you go on the lateral aspect of the um, radial head, you can see the annular ligament with the capitalum. Then following the lateral gutters, you can see the olecranon on the right and the trochlea on the left, there is always at the junction between the horizontal and vertical place of the olecranon a bare area without any cartilage. It's not arthritis, it's normal. So here is, under arthroscopic control, the other portal you can perform. I will, go, I will move back to, see, to show you. To sh I would like to start again, just to show you how to perform the portals. So that's uh, the fat, you can remove it. You're gonna see all the radial head. So moving your scope from the straight portal to 
the uh, olecranon recess, you can perform the second portal under arthroscopic control with the needle. As I told you, it's a second important tool. So you will go upward in a few seconds. That's the bare area, olecranon, trochlear. You move slightly to the top. Here is the tip of the olecranon, the subtricipital recess. Then with the needle, you can perform the superior lateral portal. You check it atroscopically. Then when it's done, you can switch your scope to this portal and perform the transtricipital portal. And pushing on the medial gutter, of course, you can see the nerve through that. That's why you don't have to perform any portal in this area. You have to be transtricipital in the axis of the medial gutter. So you can use two anterior portals to explore the anterior compartment. The lateral one, which can be, which is on the line, which is parallel to the radial nerve, not vertical, neither horizontal. You have to make it parallel to the radial nerve. It could be at different level. At the joint line, on the capital radial joint line, usually it's quite enough. And you perform a medial one by trans elimination. That means from outside in. You can sometimes go straight from the posterior compartment to the anterior compartment in the triangle. You can check the anterior lateral portal. It's not risky if you just have the joint line. Then you can perform the anterior medial portal under arthroscopic control. And by, it's black and white, I don't know why. That's the radial head. That's the tip of the coronary process. The, the probe comes from the posterior straight portal. And of course, you can switch all the portal. You don't have to be straightly fixed in one portal. You can move from one to the other. But in this position, there is one problem. In the anterior exploration of the anterior compartment, you are, it's quite difficult. Because you see the, you, the, the, the screen displays the, the compartment as if you were in front of the, the elbow. But in fact, you are behind the elbow. So it's quite difficult to make some movement. So you have to, to, it's a learning curve. It's quite difficult to do. But little by little, you can improve and you know how to do that. And as I told you, there is something which is important. You have to keep intact the mobility of the, of the joint because you enlarge the working space. By bending the, the elbow, you enlarge the anterior compartment. By extending the elbow, you enlarge the posterior compartment. So and once more, it doesn't change the nerve capsule vicinity. It just enlarges your working space. So the postoperative course, of course, is of importance because we talk about basic. The nerve assessment is mandatory. Just after, even if you are sure of what you're doing, but you have to check that. You have to check if there is that there is no compartment syndrome, and for, there is some uh, rules for the for the rehab. We will not go further on. If we look at the French Arthroscopic Society, I chair a symposium about uh, 500 cases, and the larger indication was the loose bodies. Of course, <coughs> the arthrolysis, and I will talk uh, this afternoon about that. It was the second indication. It's quite interesting for that, and there is a, a lot of reason for. And of course, there is other indication. There is never, never in my experience, the place for tourism in arthroscopy. That means when you don't have any diagnostic to perform an arthroscopy. <laughs> So the complications, the range initially, it was a, a, a procedure which was considered as a, a risky one. But little by little, as the rules and the guidelines are more precise, the, the number of complications dropped down dramatically. And for instance, in our experience, there is only 6% of minor uh, complications, but probably the chondral lesions are underestimated because when you start, you always make some scuffing or something like that. And the major complications are quite rare now because you, there is no risk for the, ner for, for the nerve if you are really uh, careful. How to prevent, finally, all these complications? Luigi told you, you have to think anatomy. The bony landmark of our importance. If you think that the nerve is just in front of the radial head, you will avoid to cut the capsule at this place, or you will be careful. 
you have to start with an elbow flexed and inflated. You have to make only superficial skin incision and to avoid any high pressure intraarticular uh, procedure. And when you use the shaver, especially in the medial gutter, avoid the suction to avoid to resect the ulnar nerve. And as a conclusion, I would say that this procedure is quite rare. In a specialist group, which is the French Arthroscopic Society, only 13% of the members perform elbow arthroscopy. That's quite nothing. The mean age was 43. That's quite old. I'm sorry, but it's quite old regarding the, the overall arthroscopy. And the experience of this guy was more than 11 years of arthroscopy. And the percentage of elbow arthroscopy in the practice is 2.5 to 10% of the overall activity. When you do so, it's not so difficult. But if you look at the number for these people who perform this kind of uh, procedure, it's in France, it's not in the US, it's not in other, world, in other countries, but when you perform almost five arthroscopy a year, that means you know how to do, to do it. It's not like a knee, it's very, it's very rare. And when you do more than 10, you just become a specialist in elbow arthroscopy. So it's one a week, it's not so much, but it's quite difficult. So maybe in France we are careful, maybe we are not so good. I don't think so. I just want to inform you about that. Thank you so much.